So Tim, it must be a couple of years, I guess, since we had this crazy idea uh, for Songfest to uh, encourage, to find some men who'd be willing to sing. Um, why did we do that? No, up for a challenge. It seemed completely mad at the time. Well, what, what I've noticed when I went around community choirs is that, you know, they have such a small contingent of men and an average community choir, there's, there's about um, 16 women and four men. In fact, according to our stats, about 11% of, of community choirs are male and 89% female. So um, when we thought about how we could attract more men to singing, we have first had to figure out well, where are these men, mm. and I think you did that really well. And I think we came here because yep. these men sheds uh, are popping up all over the place. There is now um, more than I think something like 2,000 men sheds in Australia, which is an incredible thing. They only started in the year 2000, and I think we've got a couple of hundred here in WA, mm. and um, and quite a few of those around the metropolitan Perth. So you and I went and visited quite a number of those sheds. Mm. Yes, and, we've um, learnt a lot. We did. <laughs> men, men know that they can't sing. We just thought they didn't want to, but it's in fact more the case that they've been told by quite authoritative people uh, that they can't sing, and they take that to heart. You know, grade one is a very formative time, and uh, it seems like about 80% of men have been told they can't sing. Yeah, so the story we heard from Mark about being told when he was six years old um, that, it, that he couldn't sing, that seems... We hear that all the time. And that, that's more the rule than the exception. Yeah, I think that's right. So there's a big hurdle uh, to overcome when you're talking about getting men singing. Um, but when we got the men in the sheds, you know, uh, who were just having their morning tea to stand up and make a noise, they, they did do that. Yep. And if you make it not about singing so much as making sound, that changes the relationship. I mean, I guess one of the main things I think we've learnt is that if you want to do something harder with men than get them to sing, it would be to get them to dance. Um, so you don't want to talk about singing, you have to come up with ways of it just being vocalising together and then they're prepared to step into that space. The really interesting thing is it doesn't take more than a minute for them to actually realise that they're singing, which is a bit of an awkward moment there where they can't keep up the facade any longer. but. Yeah, it's hard to get them over that threshold, having realised that they can actually make a sound that would be accepted as singing. Keep them singing. Yeah, there was a tremendous response towards making a noise, but um, but then when the decision time was made to come back and try that again, that's when uh, reality kicks in and those old memories and so on and the fears and doubts and mm. and uh, decades of, yeah. of repression, I would trauma. say. Trauma. Mm. Yeah, trauma mm. is not a bad word to them. I think, it, I think there is trauma because I've been astonished at the detail uh, that these men can recount about uh, exactly what they were told and when and who by. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's a big hurdle to overcome um, and I think while we've learnt a lot there's still much more for us to learn about how to make it easier for men to step through that door and let themselves give it a go and so I think one of the main learnings that's come to me is that men have this idea they have to sing well and we've got a completely unrealistic expectation of what it means to sing. We've it's the voice or it's you know Dean Martin or it's someone who's recorded and so getting men together and stopping them worrying about the individual sound seems to make a very big difference. Yeah that seems to be a, a major factor and so we made a small start here at, at Mosman Park we've got a group of uh, 20 odd guys singing and that's taken us um, I mean we've had now 18 months in this program with the funds from the Department of Local Government mm -hmm. um, which have kindly um, sponsored the directors and so on to come along and spend some time here at the shed with the men as we just saw with Kavisha and um, we've, we've worked through those funds now and we've come up with, with a singing group but we're hoping that this is just really the first drop in, in the bucket. Yeah absolutely and something we've hoped for all along is this uh, an exemplar to take to other men's sheds to give them the clue of what's possible. My concern is that we can take the men you've just seen there who responded to an ad that acknowledged that men can't sing and if we took them now to another men's shed the men in that shed would say oh it's alright for them they can sing. So we've got success as its own um, disincentive. Own defeat, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. Defeated so, by success. Uh, I'm not surprised that it's a hard task that you've taken on, Matt, um, but I think we've learned a great deal uh, on the way, but I think we're still to crack the code completely. 
So yeah, this is really just uh, day one, and, and I guess I think I realised fairly early on this is going to be a lifetime adventure and beyond uh, beyond my lifetime for sure. Uh, it's not something that will change overnight, but we've made a small step here at Molesman Park, and we do hope this is the start of uh, bigger things in the future. Indeed. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Good work.